Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and welcome to another Switch game review. That is right, I've got another game review for the Switch. And the next one, of course, is going to be for the Switch as well. It's kind of sad, because I don't want to become, like, just a Switch game reviewer like some YouTubers out there. I want to review games for other systems, but it's just how the card's laid. In the case of this particular game, I happened to find it on a really good sale on the eShop. And I decided it was high time to check this out because I really adored games like this when I was younger. Uh, games like Super Off-Road and Super Sprint and games like that. Uh, slot racing games, I guess you can call them. But those, that genre is more or less dead nowadays. But when I saw this game, I knew I had to pick it up. And so let's check it out. But what game is that, you might ask? Rockin' Racing Off-Road. But is it a good? We're about to find out. Okay, so what we have here is Rockin' Racing Off-Road DX for the Nintendo Switch. This game was also previously released on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC, and they're technically enhanced ports of a game that we also saw on the Wii U, just titled Rockin' Racing Off-Road. The whole idea behind this game is that you drive around in various off-road vehicles that can include like monster trucks, dune buggies, all kinds of vehicles like that. And you go around a short course, races are very quick. It usually doesn't take more than two minutes to complete a race just because the courses are so short and you only have a few laps to go through. You have a field of up to eight vehicles on the road at once. And of course, the objective is very simple. Make it to the finish line first before the other guys. But if you don't, that's okay because it is based on a series of four races and your overall score will determine the victor. So if you don't get first place all the time, that doesn't really matter as long as you have the highest overall score at the end of a race. So there are three modes in total. There is the championship mode, which is the primary single player mode that allows you to race on five different circuits with four different tracks that you race in each circuit. You also unlock different vehicles as you complete various circuits. There's also the time trial mode, which just lets you essentially uh, get the fastest speeds and things like that. And then, of course, you also have the ability to do practice. And then you also have the option to do up to four players in multiplayer on one game. If it doesn't sound like there's much in the game, that's because there really is not. Bear in mind, this is only an $8 game, and you're definitely getting that kind of offering with this. There's barely any kind of options or anything like that. Like, you can adjust the sound, and that's about it. So there's really not a lot that you can do in this game. But... This kind of game is all about the racing action. And how is that racing action? Well, fortunately, I'm glad to report that the game plays very well. It's really easy to pick up, simple to play. It only uses a couple of buttons. You have gas, you have brake, and you have steering. That's essentially it. There's nothing else that you can do control-wise, at least that I'm aware of. There's no nitros or anything like that like we had in say super off-road but that's okay because this game doesn't play exactly the same this is meant to play a little bit more realistically and it's meant to just have tight control it certainly does a great job with the actual gameplay it does play very nice um but that being said it's just very bare bones i do want to drive the point home that this is a budget game and it is budget in a lot of different ways but uh, one of those ways of course is just the lack of complexity in the game itself uh, also the user interface is very basic and bare bones it looks like something that you would see in a flash game or something like that and of course if we look beyond the ui and the modes that this game offers you'll also see that various other things are really bare bones in the game as well uh, for example the music and voice acting now even though there are people actually credited in the game 
for doing these things. They still sound like really generic and things that were just sampled from a royalty-free library. Um, I'll just go ahead and play a little bit so you guys know exactly what I mean. Three, two, one, go! Okay, I think that sufficiently proves my point on what I want to say about that. And, you know, that's okay. It's okay that it's not the most original or flashy design, that it feels so elementary in a way. And that's okay because it is a budget game, and like I said, the gameplay is still fun. Um, so I would particularly recommend this, perhaps, if you're someone that really like slot racing games or perhaps if you just want to kind of have like a different kind of multiplayer game to play with your friends and whatnot but i do want to point out something that's really laughable let's go ahead and take a look at some more footage Oh my god, the AI is so bad when you're playing in the lower difficulties. Uh, the difficulty is based on the circuits that you're playing, so if you want to see hilariously bad AI, just play the first couple of circuits because they will completely go bonkers. And it's so hilarious. It's such a, uh, I guess, an unintended side effect of joy that you get from watching how stupid they can be. <laughs> but all jokes aside, it's still a pretty decent game. One thing that I thought was kind of odd, but when I saw it, I was like, this is actually kind of neat, and it's actually a good throwback to Super Off-Road, is the lack of UI. Like, the UI is very minimal. As a matter of fact, there is a track sign that actually shows you your times and laps and everything like that and where you're ranked. So it's really interesting to kind of gauge things like that. I also appreciate the track design, even though there is a limit on the actual patterns of tracks. There's probably only like six or so of them. Um, they did a really good job with the way they placed hills and various obstacles in the tracks. So it makes the races really interesting, especially when you get to the higher difficulties where it's a lot more challenging and fun. So overall, I think it's a good game, but it needs a lot of improvement. For example, I wish that there was more crunch and uniqueness to the design of the game as far as the graphics, the sound, all that good stuff. You know, I really wish that there was kind of more to have with all that. Plus, I would really like to see more courses, more tracks, maybe a track editor. That would be awesome. But most of all, I just kind of want a mode like Super Off-Road, because you remember how awesome Super Off-Road was, guys? I mean, this game was the bomb, and I just had so much fun. I just had to replay this game after playing this, and I was just having a blast. Even though it is kind of a repetitive game, and it uh, you, you could probably get bored of it after 20 minutes or so, it's still a blast to play, and I mean, oh my god, we have... Jeff and Tim Follin making music for the Super Nintendo version? Oh, the party is on! And this is Dow Phoenix out.